Well, let me go ahead and get started since it's 12.05 and I want to make the best use of everyone's time and thank you to all of our guests, James, Jack, Dakisha, Elise, John, Marius, Ryan. Uh, if anybody joins as we get started, we'll, we'll get them up to speed. I would like to introduce and thank uh, Delaney Ball, Katie Michaels. Um, I would also like to thank Kelly Mitchell. Uh, they are joining us from TQL which is a growing and expanding company here in the Cincinnati area. And IT is a big part of their movement. And so we'll get to talk to them later on in the presentation. Uh, I would also like to introduce Denise Bartik, the owner of Max Technical Training. She's giving you a wave. We also have Annette Ballard, our career services advisor, and Kevin Newkirk, who, along with myself, is a boot camp success specialist and advisor to those uh, seeking a career in IT. Uh, we will be your guide, and as Maria said, uh, looking for someone to help uh, guide you through the process of determining your career in IT and if a boot camp is right for you. And that's really what today is focused on. So before I get started, though, uh, can everybody see my screen? Perfect. Um, please add any questions you have when you hear from one of our guests into the chat, and I'll make sure to direct it to them. We will have an open Q&A at the end of our session today where you can ask your own questions and engage with our guests. Uh, take some notes. And carry your momentum from today. You're joining us. You've taken time out of your day to learn about a boot camp and carry that momentum uh, moving forward. Max Technical Training boot camps have always been focused on helping people gain a career in IT, um, meeting hiring partners and companies, and getting the technical training and the soft skills that you need is absolutely important and a focus of our boot camp and our team is to make sure that you are successful. We've been a training partner since 1998. Our global network of training experts, people like Sean and Greg and the team that we bring in, and I'll introduce the entire team here in a few moments, these are going to be the individuals responsible for the knowledge transfer that gives you the knowledge, the skills you need to be successful in a career in IT. And we've been doing this since 2012. Our first boot camp was originally designed for a corporate partner that was trying to create developers from the inside. And we transitioned that product and that experience for individuals to be able to pursue a career in IT. And our custom curriculum, it's, it's, it's not out of the box. It was designed by Sean, who you just heard from a moment ago, uh, who is our senior uh, Java instructor. And it's really created and was designed to give you the best path in that knowledge transfer to become a successful developer. But there's also some other barriers in the way that we assist with and our creative financial solutions knock down a lot of those barriers so that you can just focus on the actual technical skills and your path to that career. We also have an excellent hiring partner network of our corporate partners that we've been working with since 1998 that are now the individuals we talk to about their developer needs and make sure that we can bring in a team of individuals and get them up to speed on the skills that can help make a difference in that company. And we're dedicated to the IT community. We love being involved in events and we love the Cincinnati IT community. It's just a, it's a lot of fun to be a part of. But what's going on in the IT community? What's actually happening out in jobs and what is the real demand? Right now, the best jobs across the country for 2021, if you look at the rankings, number two is software developer. There's projected more than 316,000 jobs across the country. Uh, statisticians, which is really your, I'd say your business analyst is number six. And number eight is your data scientist, your data analytics. And we have career boot camps in all of those areas to help you pursue a career in IT. So when you look at it, our three career boot camps 
cover three of the top 10 highest in-demand jobs that are out there right now. So when you look at our tri-state region, and I know some of you are joining us from outside of the tri-state, but when you look at Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, you're talking about on Indeed alone for software developers, there's over 4,000 posted jobs currently in the tri-state. Business analyst, again, you're, you're looking at a total of 4,000 or more jobs between the two, and data analyst also has very similar opportunities. So when you add those numbers up, you're talking about 13,822 available tri-state IT jobs that are currently posted between LinkedIn and Indeed. That's a lot of opportunity that's sitting out there and that's waiting for you. And if that's just in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, imagine what the entire country or world is like as far as their needs. Every company, no matter what they sold, has to become an IT company in order to be successful when it comes to apps, websites, um, any of those components that they rely on. So how do you how do you choose the the right boot camp for you? When it comes to Max and our boot camps, one of the things that we focus on, and one of the reasons why, for example, we developed a part time boot camp, is because of lifestyle. Not everybody can just quit their job, can just give up the financing that they bring in for their life or family obligations, and so your lifestyle is a big part of what's going to make the right boot camp for you. Also, your learning style. Is it best for you to just be fully immersed Monday through Friday, or do you need a day in between to be able to consume the information and keep working from there? You probably have family goals, personal goals, career goals. How does a boot camp fit within your life and which one's going to be the right one for you? And then what technology do you learn? What are you going to be capable in? What are what what are you going to be able to do for the company that you work for once you leave the boot camp? And I think ultimately, and I know it's bullet pointed last, but how is that team of people responsible for your education and those that support your pursuit of a career in IT? How invested are they? How does it feel? Does it, does it feel like they're invested in your future and that they really care? Or does it feel like this is just another place to get training? And I think that Max always, always shines in that area because it's a very family style atmosphere and it's very supportive. And that's one of the reasons why I love to work with the boot camp. What's different about Max is our graduates, 96% plus are placed within 90 days of graduating the boot camp. Our students are leaving, especially from the maximum boot as a multi-language developer. And what you're gonna find, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk to people like Kelly Mitchell that we have from TQL and Delaney, and you know, uh, we may even hear from Katie. Katie, I know you've got to jump off, off at 1230. Um, what does it mean to be a multi-language developer? And what does it mean to that company? We heard over and over over from our hiring partners and from our alumni that they graduated in Java, but now they're working in .NET, or they graduated in .NET and now they're working in Java. And when you look at most boot camps, they're dedicated to one language, but we've modified our curriculum over the last year to deliver a boot camp that will create a multi-language developer that can be hands-on functional in both Java and .NET. One of the other things that I love is the direct instruction time. Yes, you'll participate in paired programming and you'll get hands-on writing every line of code as it says on the next bullet point. But that direct instructor time who's in the room with you that's available to you, whether it's virtual or in person, one of the reasons that we keep a controlled attendance for our boot camps, we keep a limit is to make sure that each student gets the time with the instructor that they need to reach a level where they love to code. That I think is something that is unique, is I've gone through training and sometimes you end up getting left in a frustrated spot that you, you don't know enough to, to really establish a love for what you're doing. And I believe in our boot camp. 
between the direct instruction time and writing every line of code, you develop a love for what you do. And that passion is required in the IT field. And then we've got the max grad standard, which there's an expectation from our hiring partners of what a max graduate is. And it's not just technical, it's soft skills, it's emotional intelligence. There are dynamic teams that are being developed through an agile mindset. And the max grad standard really lives up to that. And that's an important, important aspect that we hear from our hiring partners. And then your lifetime career services. We're there to support you throughout the lifetime of your career. Once you graduate the boot camp, it's not just like, hey, let the bird fly the nest and then watch, try to watch them fly. We're here for you through your transitions. We're here for you as you try to evolve your career in IT. And it's beyond just the boot camp. We have students that come back to us and they're like, I need to transition from this place, or I'm trying to reach a goal of, of getting here. Can you help me? And yes, we're always there to help you. And that's unique about Max. In order to deliver all of this, though, it takes a village. It takes a village of people. And some of them you'll see on what I call the Brady Bunch window of our virtual event here. Um, it's going to start with Kevin Newkirk or myself as a boot camp success specialist. That's going to really be the introduction and the first person that you get to know and helps you through the process. Uh, Kim is a wonderful member of our team that ha helps you with your forms, making sure to look at financing, what options are available, reducing out-of-pocket cost. And as you can see, and she's never missed one in two and a half, almost three years, I'm losing track. Um, Denise is with us, uh, the owner of Max, and she has an open door policy and is always engaging with our students to understand them as a person and what they're going through in the boot camp. And to see that is very unique for a training partner, um, in my perception at least. And then you've got Sean and Greg, your senior instructors that'll help you through Java and .NET. And you can see Sean is with us today and he's in the Max facility. And we also have Annette with us. And Annette kind of rounds out that that technical experience with, with how do I handle my resume? How do I handle interviews? How do I apply for jobs? And we actually bring in some specialists in certain areas like Kendra Ramirez helps you with your personal branding, LinkedIn, and understanding how to maximize that tool that has become so very important in the job search. And then when you think about the agile or scrum mindset, the, the methodology of getting IT projects done in a smart way. So many companies, including TQL and Kelly, you and I talked about that earlier about the agile mindset and what it means to a business. And Kelsey comes in and really helps you understand what it means and how to work in a dynamic team. And to work in a dynamic team, it requires a lot of soft skills and emotional intelligence. And that's where Heinrich Stander comes into play. So when you look at this, this is a very holistic view for yourself as a person on how to be successful in a developer role. This is our, these are our village people that really come around you and make sure that you get what you need. Okay, so that sounds great. Your, your team sounds wonderful. Max sounds wonderful. But what about the boot camp? Well, we have two different types of boot camps right now. We have a fully immersive Monday through Friday, drinking from a fire hose, 13 week full-time boot camp where you learn Java and .NET. We also have a 25 week, right now Java specific, but you'll also get the syntax for .NET. And again, throughout this presentation, you're gonna hear terms, we're gonna throw terms at you. You may not know what they are. It may not resonate with you today, but it is important and we're gonna make sure that you understand what these terms mean. So when you think about these boot camps, you're really looking at full-time versus part-time. In the full-time, you're Monday through Friday, 9 a.m., 4.30 p.m., like it says right there, drinking water from a fire hose. It's a lot, but it's great. And especially if your learning style, if you go back to that slide, you know, when we sit down and talk to people, these are the things that really matter. But there's also people that, as I mentioned, can't give up their job or their family responsibilities and obligations. So maybe the part-time 
where you can join us from home. The part-time is fully virtual. It's Monday, Wednesday, 6 to 9.30. And, and as it says, you know, with the Saturdays, it's a handful of evenings and a collection of Saturdays. And in six months, you can keep working your job. You can handle your, fa your family responsibilities. And right now, I want to make sure it's clear, there's obviously a pricing difference. And one of the biggest differences is right now, the virtual part-time is Java focused and you will pick up some of the .NET syntax. But right now the 13 week maximum is hands-on coding in both. So there is a little bit of a difference. And right now we're evolving kind of in, in, in baby steps to make sure that you're getting the right experience you need. And, and I believe we will see the part-time also going to a hybrid um, as the full-time has. But what does this really mean to you? What does this mean to become a full-stack developer? And as somebody that is personally not a software developer, I really need to hand that over to Sean Blessing. Um, Sean, if you would, give us a little bit of your background and let's talk about what it means to be a full-stack developer as you come out of this boot camp. Sure. So, hi, everybody. Uh, Sean Blessing is my name. Uh, I'm an instructor here at Max, a senior instructor, and have been here for almost five years. Uh, prior to that, I was a developer for 15 years and then a software development manager for about another eight or nine years. So uh, lots of experience in technology, um, lots of experience in varied technologies. I mean, I started out as a mainframe developer, not by choice, but just that was the job that I could get. And, uh, but I very quickly moved into object-oriented programming in Java. So um, I have a lot of Java web development experience and I was a full stack developer at the time. Um, we didn't use that term, uh, but what it really means is a, a developer that has a depth of knowledge in all the technologies that you need to really create a true application for any enterprise. Uh, because what that means, it, I, I think of it as a layered cake. So you have to have um, backend skills. You have to have database skills. So to be able to manage data in a database, you have to have what's called middle layer skills, which is the fundamental programming that allows you to utilize that data in a database. And then you need front end skills which for all of us using the internet today, that's your web browser. So um, the front end skills are probably the ones you're at least most familiar with terminology wise. That's things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, and Angular is the uh, framework in JavaScript that we use. Um, on the back end, we really blend that middle layer and database layer together. So we utilize a relational database to store all of our data. And if you've never dealt with databases before, think of them as really robust Excel spreadsheets. You have uh, headers across the top and you've got data inside of them and you're managing the company's data. So you have to be able to build applications that will provide the functionality that your business users are requiring. So I always say that um, application development is really solving business problems. So every day you get to come to work and solve a problem for your business and you do that through code. So the technologies that are mentioned here, Java and .NET are the fundamental middle layer technologies. And in the maximum bootcamp, you'll start with one um, I'm teaching a maximum camp right now. And so we're starting with Java. It really does not matter which technology you start with, but you learn one technology and you spend roughly four ish weeks in that technology. And then you do it all again in the other one. But the second time around, it only takes maybe two to three weeks because once you learn the foundations in one, it goes much, much more quickly with the other. So that is my description of what a full stack developer is. When you come out of a boot camp, you can manage that full stack of technologies to build an application for any organization. 
So Sean, one? yeah, and so as you, as you go through this front end to back end, and as I told everyone, we're going to throw some terms at them that they may not necessarily be familiar with. But now that we look at this layer of you know from source control to capstone, you know that 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 kind of is the 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 start and finish of the boot camp. So how do they work their way from source control all the way to capstone? What are we looking at here? Um, that is the entirety of the boot camp. I think the only thing that's maybe missing here is the career services and uh, the scrum, um, the agile scrum stuff. Uh, but source control, I think of that as your virtual file cabinet. Like if you're managing documents and you store things in files, you are you're doing that with code. So you got to have source control. You got to have database instruction. There's about a week of database work. Um, all of these things in the programming, MVC design, frameworks, web user interface, um, all of that is what I just talked about from back end all the way to front end. And we methodically work you through these technologies in a way that one builds on the other. And the main thing that I think of, and I'm not even sure if I'm answering the question correctly, but the main thing I see when I look at this list is that capstone at the end. The capstone um, is your crowning achievement of a boot camp. So it has to be developed by you. It's all of your code, and it is your um, biggest shining star in your portfolio when you finish the boot camp. It is you being able to demonstrate to any company that you can do this. And it is a significant project. It's a big project. It takes lots and lots of hours. Um, I'd say any developer is probably going to spend a total of, oh man, probably a hundred hours or more working on their capstone in its entirety. And we at least piecemeal it to you through the bootcamp. So even at the beginning week, when you're working on database, um, you actually build your capstone database by the end of that first week. Then when you're done with the Java or .NET portions of bootcamp, you'll have your backend complete. And then finally, when you get to those last couple weeks of the bootcamp, you'll be working on the front end. So it's not a crash course all at once, but we build it slowly through the boot camp, and you'll have class in time with your instructor to work on it, as well as many hours at home. Did that? Well, get oh, it absolutely. And and we've not really hit them with the all of the terminology yet. So now let's 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 really pour it on and <laughs> let's add to that list. Um, these are some of the terms that again a lot of this terminology you're not going to be familiar with yet, but, uh, you know, Sean, what, <laughs> that's a, that's a long list of technologies that you come to understand at the end of the boot camp. It just kind of summarize what we're looking at here. Um, it, the way that they're organized is pretty much the group of the full stack set of uh, technology. So, um, the first two go hand in hand, Git and GitHub. That's for, version control, um, anything with the letters SQL in it is database related. So those next three are database um, technologies. Then you get into the Java and C sharp portion. And really those are the biggest, in my opinion. Um, they're the biggest because they simply take the longest to learn because that's the first time you're really learning how to program. Um, what does it mean to build an application? Um, what are the basic logic structures? Um, those kind of things are really hard to get the first time around, but then once you learn them, it's easier to learn the other things. So then the rest of the technologies in that first column on the left are all supplemental to that object-oriented programming, their frameworks. So it's, it's really where you learn to build not just a little console application that runs on your laptop, but how do you build a web service application how are you building services which are bits of code that provide a service to other applications how do you write those and talk to the database so that first column is really relating to that the the fundamental programming the database stuff in the second column um, the first three or so are also related to the back end but then after that they're all front-end technologies so 
even though you may not understand what these terms mean, um, it, it's you'll learn them through the boot camp. You can look them up online, um, but in general, it's all grouped into that three layered cake of database, middle layer, and front end technologies. And Sean, you're the only one with this experience. What does it feel like to interact with somebody months or years after they come out of the boot camp and to hear what they're doing and to see what they're doing? And, and what does that feel like to, to watch them go through the boot camp and then to see them just flourish in a career that they love? I, you're, you're one of the only ones with that experience. What is that like? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's simply the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my career. Um, that's why I got into this in the first place. Um, I've, I've done other jobs where I thought I would be able to help people get to where they want to go. That's why I got into software development management. Um, but nothing has been like this. I mean, the, not just years later, but even right after a boot camp, um, when students are getting their first jobs, um, you know, I'll randomly get a text. Um, about an interview and then the next day or two after then I hear oh my god I got my first job offer so there's nothing like hearing a student get excited about that first gig I mean that's why I do this completely so um, and having that relationship with the students I mean if you come to our boot camps you're going to get to know us really well and we're going to get to know you really well I mean it's, it's impossible not to after spending this much time with you um, so these relationships, I'm, I'm proud of those relationships. I, I keep a really strong network on LinkedIn. And so all of my past students are friends with me, um, not just LinkedIn, but Facebook, um, Instagram, other things, we still keep in touch. Um, but then even recently I had one student that I was just wondering, man, what's, what's he been up to? And I saw something on LinkedIn about, um, a new position. So I texted him and said, hey, what's going on? And he said, oh, man, you wouldn't believe it. Um, my company uh, got bought out, but I got moved to a new position. But this new position is, is working in Java, and it's now 100% remote. And he's able, his family is able to be with um, his parents out in Maine, and he's able to work remotely for part of the year. Um, so he, he pretty much said it's his dream come true, and he wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for max technical training. So, um, you know, I get goosebumps when I hear stories like that, you know, my students telling me where they're at and loving what they're doing. Um, so it makes me proud to be just one part of their story, but it makes me mostly proud of them and their accomplishment. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sean. I, I appreciate that. And Sean, if you have to jump off to teach class, we, we completely understand. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to hang out. I may turn my camera off because I do have to eat, <laughs> but I will be here in case anybody's got questions. You, you, you go right ahead. Our boot camp students need you today. So uh, you, you do what you need to do. And we'll let Annette Ballard pick up where you left off because it's not just about the technical. And um, Dakisha, I've got your questions and we will make sure to get those answers for you. Um, we'll get to some of the things that you touched on, so we'll make sure that that happens. Um, but I'd like to introduce Annette Ballard. And Annette, if you could give us a, a lovely introduction. Um, Annette Ballard is going to be your career champion in pursuing that job and landing that perfect opportunity. So Annette, how do we help them get there? Thank you, Dustin. I um, have the distinct privilege and honor of getting to do something that I absolutely love to do. And that's helping someone in a very practical sense. Um, I laugh and say I really wanted to be a nurse and did two years of Latin in high school and was a candy striper at Fort Hamilton Hospital, but I can't do body fluids. Um, so this is my way of really making a difference in someone's life and um, no body fluids. Um, so I'm just enjoying helping people get connected um, to hiring opportunities. But to do that, we have everything in place first. So we start out with the Gallup Strengths. So we give you some language to um, be articulate and helping you to differentiate yourself in the um, your competition, um, not just blowing 
smoke, but authentically speaking about what you can bring to the table, not just your previous work experience, but those things that you do well naturally. We help you get your resume ready um, and make you shine um, because that's your marketing tool along with your cover letter and your references. We um, bring in Kendra Ramirez, as Dustin mentioned, and we get do some learning around LinkedIn and some people poo poo. Am I allowed to say that? Um, LinkedIn, um, but it really is a viable tool. And um, we're seeing that I've got an email from one of the students this week that says, Oh my gosh, Annette, I was awful about my LinkedIn, but you know, I embraced what you told me because I'll then meet with you one on one to get make sure your LinkedIn aligns with your resume and your personal brand. Um, to help you give you those keywords so people can find you, right? Um, and then we, I work with you on interviewing and um, help prepare before you go on that first interview and just coach you along the way, um, interfacing with employers um, on an ongoing basis. I'm learning from students that are interviewing what's going on out there. Um, one of our grads has seven interviews last week. Um, so it's fun um, and it's, it's, we celebrate with you. I, we'll do the happy dance <laughs> when you get your job opportunity um, and then just stay with you. So I've got three max grads that have found themselves in transition and they circle back around. And um, Denise gives me the opportunity to help them again with their resume or help coach them toward their hiring opportunity. And then lastly, Dustin touched on it, but um, bringing in Heinrich Stonder, he um, teaches a workshop on EQ, that emotional intelligence. And I don't know, um, Kelly or Delaney, what you would say right now, but employers tell me that that EQ is huge. We can train you to do other things, but you've got to have healthy, balanced emotional intelligence. So just learning around that, and even though it's a soft skill, it can really be a disqualifier if we don't have that right. So um, just learning and, and coaching around that. Um, then. I stay with you. I just finished a group coaching session where we're um, helping people that are immersed in their job search just identify the barriers to go under it, over it, through it, over it, around it, all of it. What is it to get you to that hiring opportunity? So um, it's our distinct pleasure to help you towards your career goals in a very customized way because we each have we each come from a different place right and we have unique challenges so we um, don't do a one size fits all with our career services but really help you toward your career goal thank you annette and i i, I promise next time if you mention the happy dance i'm going to ask to see it okay so we'll have to get some moves ready um, since i'm doing it at home audience. even my even my husband does the happy dance now too. Well, now we, we need both celebrate. of you next time. So you better make sure your husband <laughs> is available for our next one. There you go, Kevin. Um, and, and, and that happy dance, you know, I can't, I, I, I can't explain that to you. I can't tell you what that feels like for someone that comes out of the boot camp. And the best person to do that would be uh, Dennis Samorski. Um, Dennis is one of our, our alumni that we are just so proud of. And he is at Workstate as a cloud consultant and came out of our boot camp. So uh, Dennis, uh, go ahead and unmute and um, give a little bit of background and, and, and give a little bit of your story and then talk about where things are today and, and what it meant for you to go through the boot camp. Thank you for joining us. Sure. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, a little bit about, about myself. Um, I was born in Odessa, Ukraine. I came to the States in 02. Uh, I, uh, after after high school, I did a five-year tour in, uh, in the Navy specializing in emergency medicine. So I got to experience some of the the, the fluids that Annette uh, shared with us earlier. But uh, after, after that, I... Uh, Got into Comcast as a project coordinator, and I uh, wasn't really satisfied 
the role I was doing, wanted to get hands-on, more hands-on um, into the technology and um, uh, came across Apprenti. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but uh, I was part of uh, the first cohort here in Cincinnati. And um, that led me to Max. And I uh, was actually in the boot camp of April 2019, which is crazy to say. It feels like it's been a decade uh, since that happened, but it's only been two years. And uh, Sean was my lead instructor. Um, and uh, we went through the whole full stack application uh, uh, while we were developing our our um, uh, final project. Got into you know all, all the different technologies that I still use today on a daily basis. And um, through Apprenti, I got matched up to, uh, with Kroger uh, and spent about uh, almost two years there uh, working on a lot of Java stuff, microservices, and. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to get into details uh, where, where I can but, uh, of, of the daily stuff there, but um, I recently accepted a position strictly uh, cloud-based, um, which kind of, uh, you know, a, a, while I was at Kroger, we started an Azure migration uh, probably uh, seven, eight months while I was into it. And I uh, fell in love with the cloud. I uh, decided I wanted to do cloud full time. And uh, that's kind of uh, what, I, what I'm doing now, doing the happy dance uh, at, at work state. And um, yeah, but uh, uh, even outside of um, the, the, the full stack that uh, I got to learn at Max, uh, there was uh, uh, tons of resources, you know, that helped me out and, uh, you know, that I still utilize uh, today. Like Annette mentioned, I remember taking that test and learning that, I uh, had a learner trait to me, which uh, kind of fits the IT uh, field. You know, I keep learning uh, every day and um, uh, it, it's great. Also got the Scrum certification, was able to get the Scrum certification while I was at Max. Uh, and that, that's a whole different branch of IT. You know, if you're not, uh, if you don't want to look at code all day, you know, you can now always go that route as well. So just tons of resources, uh, amazing people. I call it the Max fam. You know, we still, uh, uh, or at least before COVID, we did uh, outings uh, with my bootcamp class all the time and um, catch up. And uh, hopefully we'll get to start doing that again soon now that things are returning to normal. Those events are coming back, Dennis, and we are totally working on uh, like the cicadas. Uh, we ha we're trying to get our alumni to, to rise together. Um, what... Uh, when you think about your boot camp, if you could have left a note for yourself the first day that you started, what would you tell yourself? Um, uh, I would leave lots of notes, but one of the first ones would be just don't compare yourself to, uh, don't try to compare your experience to anyone else's. I remember we've had, uh, we had a couple of guys in, in my class that uh, have had previous experience with coding uh, and they're, they're doing fantastic today, but, uh, you know, everybody comes into the field with different, uh, levels of experience and, uh, uh, it, it will take different paces for everybody to kind of, uh, uh, learn, but, uh, as long as you stick through it and, uh, you know, you're committed, uh, then, uh, there's nothing but success in front of you. What, what has, what, what your pursuit of scrum, what has that meant to your current position at your company what has that meant to you because i know uh some some of some people with us may not know what scrum or agile is but what has it meant to what you're doing um so um every development team i've been on has a specialized scrum master so uh, i i don't take on uh, a lot of the duties for that but it definitely helped me understand the agile process and kind of hit the ground running on my first development team, understanding what to expect, what the expectations are, and uh, just got kind of get into the flow of things, you know, but, you know, every, every once in a while, when, when a scrum master is on vacation or, or sick, you know, it, it kind of allows me to step into those duties as well and fill in, which, you know, always helps. I hate and here. I thought you were in a dark corner of a room somewhere, uh, just pounding keys as they slid food under your door. It, it's not like that for where you're at. Uh, most days it is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's, uh, you know, every day varies. Honestly, some days are a lot uh, more fast paced. Some days are, uh, uh just, um, 
full of meetings. And um, I, I think it also depends on um, uh, your team and the company that you're in. But um, I, I can say that uh, every day is very exciting. Uh, in fact, you know, just uh, uh, continuing to learn and developing new skills, um, not, not just technical, but um, the soft skills, you know, working with people that that that's what my role brings to, you know, my career. Thank you very much, Dennis. I, I appreciate you joining us and thank you for your time. Uh, our alumni carve hours out of their schedule throughout their day. And Dennis, if you need to jump off, it's no problem. If, if you're there for the open Q&A, we'll make sure to throw some stuff your way. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. And good to see you again. It's been a minute. Good to see you. Thank you. So again, we can... I can only share certain perspectives and your path to a career in IT and your decision on whether a boot camp is right for you. We want to bring you the right information. And as we mentioned at the top of our presentation, uh, we have Delaney Ball, a corporate recruiter from TQL here in Cincinnati. And we also have Kelly Mitchell. So I'd like to bring them in to talk about where their company is, how company culture matters for a developer and where things are going currently, because you think about TQL, it's a logistics company. There are so many companies that do other things that are not IT focused, but require so much IT. So I'm going to start with Kelly and uh, Kelly as the software development manager at TQL, the company's in logistics, but where is the company expanding and what's going on? Um, we're expanding everywhere, uh, but uh, there's a huge investment in technology as a, as a differentiator for us. And I think that's true in, in pretty much any, any company uh, in any industry, any company that's going to be you know, growing or, or really you know, competitive in today's market is going to be making a significant investment in technology to, to drive business uh, transformations. And, and currently, Kelly, we have a private boot camp going on where you guys are grooming from the inside. And we'll talk to Delaney, you know, a corporate recruiter at TQL about what that means. But for yourself, you know, someone that's been doing and living IT since you and I talked, what, 85 back in yeah. mainframe days? Yeah. Um, you know, what are, what, do the new developers and the direction of TQL, what, is, what does it mean and what does the software developer lifestyle mean and how, has it, how have you seen it change? You know, how has IT changed in the role? Well, yeah, back when I started as a developer, uh, literally I would go down to a shared room and, and code on a green screen. You know, you, you run the program, it probably die, you get a green bar printout and go through a stack trace and oh, it, was, it was a lot of fun um you know today we're we are much more aligned with the business and trying to make sure we're delivering value for the business more frequently and that really ties into the agile conversation you had previously where that that's been the most transformational thing i think i've seen in my 30 plus years of, of it is the move from a waterfall approach to an agile approach to deliver business value more frequently uh, and to really partner more, much more closely with, with our business. And I'm going to ask you the same question I'm about to ask Delaney. If you could give me a percentage breakdown of technical skills versus soft skills that have been critical in your career, how would you break that down? Is that a 50-50 split, a 70-30, more technical? Like, oh, I imagine there's an evolution in the need for the soft skills in your area. How would you break that down? Uh, we, when we're looking recruiting, we're looking equally. We want people who have all the the technical skills that we're looking for, and I'm not, you know, really we're talking about in some cases that potential for those skills, but they have to have that ability to fit in our culture and to work and collaborate effectively with other people to to communicate with all levels um, of the business. So uh, it's a it's a fifty fifty split for for me when I'm recruiting. Great. Thank you. And, and Delaney, what about yourself as a corporate recruiter, as you look to bring in more IT individuals to support the company, what is it that you're looking for when you sit down and, and, and talk to potential software developers? And if you'd like, uh, give us a little introduction on, on yourself and, and your role at TQL. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm a corporate recruiter with TQL and I just hit three years with TQL and I've been primarily just focused on IT recruiting with, with them, which has been really exciting. Um, three years ago, the IT department was big, but in the past three years, I've literally been able to watch them like one person by one person grow, which is really exciting. Um, what I look for is mainly just the culture fit, the personality side. I can do a quick screen of a technical skill set, but I'm not moving someone forward, you know, if the culture fit and like personality isn't there. They've got to be, you know, very collaborative, can show me that they're self-motivated. Um, yeah, so I would say like I focus a lot of my um time on like making sure the personality is there. You you, you said self-motivated and that makes me think of our our boot camp and the difference between say a traditional four-year program and doing something like an accelerated boot camp. When you look at potential candidates, are you filtering out based on who has a four-year degree and who comes out of a boot camp or are you seeing something from boot camp focused individuals and like you said that 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 self-driven mm -hmm. is there is there something there kind of yeah to be honest there's a little bit of a difference there i often find myself leaning towards moving forward the boot campers rather than the four-year degrees because they have that hands-on experience. And a lot of the time I see them more self-motivated, you know, to come in and just raise their hand when needed. They're very open to, to just like, yes, they learn development, but they learn so many different other areas as well, where at this point TQL is hiring boot campers for so many different positions. So they're open to hearing about new things. They're open to, they ask a ton of questions, which is really good. And they do a ton of prep work as well prior to speaking with me to figure out if it's going to be the best fit for them as well. When you saw that your company was doing a boot camp for internal employees to help them pursue a career in IT or something they may love outside of their current position, what did that tell you about your company? I was pumped. Yeah, I was super excited about it. I mean, it just shows that TQL is wants to grow people organically, 110%. Um, we could just go out to handshake or go to career fairs or wherever, get applicants that are coming through the door to hire for these entry level developer positions. But you know, TQL is all about keeping it in house, which is really exciting. So what are you, when you say keeping it in house, obviously you're finding something that somebody fits within the TQL culture and, and they understand what that means. And it's more valuable to groom them on the technical end once they understand. So what does it mean from your understanding? What does it mean to be a TQL employee? Hmm, that's a good question. It means that um, they understand the, the needs of the business to me, like through and through where a sales organization, and even if you're not in sales, like you're in some way sales support, even my role, even IT is definitely in a sales support type role. So once they're in it and they learn it and they get it, just to keep that knowledge and like passion in house is super important. Perfect. Delaney, thank you very much. Kelly, thank you very much for your time. If, if either of you have to jump off, uh, we totally understand. We're going to, you know, kind of come to a close here into some Q&A. So if you're still available and people have questions, I'll make sure to uh, send them over to you. We've talked a lot about the technical career. We've, we've heard from different perspectives. So for our guests joining us, like Jack, James, uh, Myra, Takesha, um, Elise, uh, John, anybody I may have missed. Uh, I see iPad, but I'm not going to call you iPad. So um, we'll just leave that one. Uh, we'll get we'll, we'll get names and contact information later, but you need to know what the next steps are. And really the next steps are to sit down with someone like myself, 
or or Kevin Newkirk, who's also with us and is a boot camp success specialist. And what we love to do is everything we've heard from our hiring partners and instructors and Annette. It, it, we just want to share this with people that want to pursue something that brings them a better opportunity. And Kevin, you and I sit down with people every week. Each story is different, but the process is is very similar. And we need to get to know people first of all. What do you what what is it that you have the privilege to discuss with potential students during the advisor interview? You know, it's a lot of what you've already shared earlier earlier in the presentation, Dustin. It's it's a discussion about um, your personal and career goals. It's a chance for us to really get to know each other. Uh, we talk about developing their passion. So things like understanding how you're truly passionate about something you may not know well. Um, we navigate training for a love in technology versus training for a job. Um, we talk about things like selecting the right boot camp. You know, we have the part time boot camp option. We have the full time boot camp. We also have data analyst and business analyst boot camps. You know, we look at your lifestyle, your learning style, your strengths, goals, et cetera, when we're exploring the right boot camp. You know, we we want you to be, we want them to be successful and and that's the most important thing for us. Um, and last but not least, you know, we talk about financing. You know, our team will collectively put our heads together and navigate these options with them. And, and Kevin, some people may wonder if coding is for them. I, I think that's a really big question. Do I have the mind or the true interest for the work? And we have an assessment uh, that's required for admission. And it, it sounds kind of scary like a test, but it's really not. Um, what, what is the assessment really about? And what does it tell the student before the boot camp? Yeah, and so this is a logic and reason assessment that's designed to replicate similar thought processes to coding problems. Um, it's an excellent gauge that measures basic capabilities of a software developer. It, it's, it's really a way for the applicant uh, with no prior IT or coding experience to know they have the aptitude to become a coder along with the motivation and the commitment. Um, so Dustin, we touched on creative financing. What does that really mean? I mean, Kevin, uh, Kevin, to me, it means honestly staying focused on your goal. And the goal is to pursue that career in IT. And when you invest in a boot camp, you need ROI. And I know that that's business acumen for a return on your investment. But for the people joining us today, that's what you need. When you make that investment towards the cost of the boot camp, and when we talk about financing, you need to know that eventually you're going to get that money back and then some. And you're talking about what your average salary is versus the cost of the boot camp. This is not the place to stop. Um, if you find out you don't like coding and coding's not for you, then then you know maybe that's it. But financing is not the place to stop. There is too much money available and too many creative solutions and groups that we're working with to help people break down that financial barrier between right now and their career in IT. And keep your momentum and don't stop. Um, kind of commit your interest and we'll work with you and we'll make sure that, that, that you get there. Financing should not be the thing that keeps you from your career in IT. And I know that we've got some questions and we're going to kind of come down to the end. And Dakisha, I've got some, some answers for you. Uh, Dakisha had a great question that she sent to me directly about the boot camp, And she asked how many women have graduated the max boot camp. And right now we're at somewhere between a 28, 29%. And I've had the pleasure to sit down with people. And so has Kevin mothers returning to the workforce after 13 years from not having any kind of employment to getting a career in software development. When Kevin's who was it? Was it, was it Kevin? This, uh, Sean, 
the goosebumps. Oh my goodness. To sit down with a woman that has finished raising her family and feels like now is her time and this is what she wants to do, to see her get that job and move forward on her own with her own thing, it just, it, the, the hair stands up on your arms. You feel the chills go through your body. These stories, this boot camp is not just about training. It's about the stories of the individuals that are changing their lives. And that's why the people here, Denise, Annette, Sean, Kevin, we love it. We love it. It's addicting to watch people really make this kind of change. It's, it, it really is. It, it, it's addicting and it's enjoyable. And so the next thing that you need to do, because you are ready, if you're here with us right now, you are ready. Choose your future. We will get you there. You tell us where you want to go. Let us get to know you. Let's form a relationship. And we're going to help you no matter what, no matter what it takes. And so coming up, again, next steps. Let's be actionable. Let's build on momentum. We have our maximum coding boot camp coming up. We also have a part-time. But the maximum coding boot camp is starting this fall. That's the curriculum that we've been modifying for two years to try and make sure we have the most competitive students out there in the job market. Um, the dates specifically, if you're, if you're ready, which you are ready, because you're here with us today, we have a data analytics in July. Our August part-time Java coding is fully virtual and those seats are filling every week. I think we've only got like four left. So if you're interested in the part-time virtual coming up at the end of the summer, let's get with myself or Kevin and let's figure out what you need to do and we'll help you. We're gonna put that fight in with you. We wanna fight with you in your process. And then we've also got our full-time maximum Java and .NET starting in September. So again, if you're here with us today and you say, you know what, this sounds great. Everything everybody has said sounds great to me. We'll help you with the next steps, whatever it takes. Don't, don't stop. Don't lose the momentum. Keep it going. You're here. We'll, we'll, we'll work it through. Um, we are at uh, 102. We are about two minutes after time. Uh, I want to make sure that we answer all of our questions. If any of our guests have to leave, uh, whether it's Delaney, Katie, Kelly from TQL, but right now, if you're still with us, and Dennis, I see you, if you want to ask our alumni, now is a great time if we can ask for some grace from a few additional minutes. If you have questions, feel free to unmute and engage with any of our guests in our last few moments before I close it down. Does anybody have any questions? Marius, Ryan, now's a really great time. Elise? I actually do have a question. Um, you mentioned that at the assessment, you know, covers the way that you think of going into coding or the way you, of, sorry, words, um, the way that you think when you're a, you know, solving a problem while coding. But I'm curious if you, if they expect people to come into, especially a maximum boot camp with any sort of foundation or anything. Hey, Dennis, how many lines of code did you write before the boot camp that you started? If I can say negative, uh, the negatives count because I, uh, I mean, outside of just uh, looking at some, uh, uh, you know, W three schools and you know some intro to programming uh, web pages, I had zero experience whatsoever. So uh, I think the boot camp is designed uh, for for just that. You know, we started out from day one with the uh, absolute basics of you know Git, and then just progressed our way from there. So Elise, none. Dakisha, what do you have for us? Go ahead, please. Um, I had another question, um, Mr. Dennis. Do you have to be good at math? Were you, were you good at math? I'm lousy at math. That's why I'm asking. Uh, I would say most roles will not require you to be good at math. Um, uh, if you've taken some higher math courses when it comes to like functional programs, that could be helpful, but no, I mean, there's not a lot of day-to-day -day math that 
uh, I personally had to have to do, you know, I think, uh, as long as you are, um, uh, I, I will say you have to be a Google expert. That's one thing that you have to be able to do is, you know, find your way out of a puzzle. Um, you know, the, the, the bootcamp provides great resources, uh, to get yourself out of the puzzle, you know, ask questions on, uh, the right websites and, um, also just the network of people, um, uh, that, that you meet, you know, it's not uncommon for me to this day to reach out to somebody that was in my boot camp and be like, Hey, have you ever seen that? Do you know, do you know what this error means or whatnot? So, uh, yeah, not, not a lot of math. Thank you. Yeah, Dakisha, you, you had great questions and great concerns, but like I said, let's 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 sit down together let's talk about it let's figure it out let's get into the details um that's what we're here for as advisors kevin and i uh i know we're at 105 if uh i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna thank kelly and delaney thank you very much for your time we we, we greatly appreciate your input and i hope to invite you back again and thank you very much for that uh, thank you, Annette. If you need to jump off, I know Kevin and I can stay on and please keep the questions coming. Dennis, if you need to jump off, um, I'm sure Workstate has plenty for you to do um, <laughs> during the day. So, uh, but again, ask your questions, ask your questions now, you know, we're here to help you make a decision on what's going to be right for you. And we've got the program that can fit your needs, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, whether it is Java and .NET or full-time or part-time. Again, we've got the hiring partners. We have the pathway for you. And we just want to help you take the next step today. And really, the next step is to schedule time with an advisor and get your assessment done. Um, if your assessment's already done, wonderful. I know we have some people that have been with us today that are already kind of locked in or their assessment is completed. Take your fears, put them in a basket, hand it to us. Let us take it over. We've got you hey, covered. Hey, Justin. Can I, Here can he I ask? Absolutely. Yeah. Go right ahead. Um, I was just want to ask is like, if the companies, what you are dealing with down there, uh, Kill Mitchell, uh, are they hiring like uh, remotely? Let's say if someone from Ireland or from another country want to work for a US company, is that possible? Kelly, would you like to take that one? Are you guys hiring remotely as a company outside of the continental US? Uh, well, not. We aren't personally, other than you know, we've got some offshore presence like in, in India, um, but there are companies that do that. I mean, it's not unheard of in the industry. Um, certainly, take Ireland a specific example is uh, one of the places that in previous places I've worked has been a very popular place. Um, Fidelity, for example, I used to work there. They had an Ireland presence because um, you know they they had a lot of synergies being an, also an English speaking. Um, so they had a, a, an offshore team, if you will, in Ireland. So it's, it's not unheard of. It's certainly possible. And, and Marius, if you're going to pick a time to capitalize on a potential work from home opportunity as a developer, yeah. let's stay pretty close to post pandemic before people get comfortable with bringing everybody back into the office. Because what I've been hearing is they're not bringing everyone back in. So what you're talking about, the work from your location for a U.S.-based office, the potential for that is the highest it's ever been right now. I also, I'm not here to answer questions, but I can tell you that at the company I currently work at, not as a developer, we, even before the pandemic, we had, it's New York based and they have people hired from Venezuela, Egypt, India, like all really all over the world. And um, it was not an issue. And I don't, it's just, it's a pretty actually small to medium sized company in New York. So that's just an example that there are companies that do that. Sorry, what's, what's the company name? <laughs> I work for a company called Backstage. I'm currently, I like am a writer editor at a magazine, but the, but it's a web product too. So the engineering side, they hire all over the world. And Marius, I mean, you're really talking what industries stretch across continents, logistics, yes, exactly. banking, yeah. insurance, health, 
all of those companies. I, know. I was I was working for United Health Group. I'm yep. pretty sure yep. it's very known in US. Yep. Uh, it's it's a part here. It's Optum called. Yep. Yep. I know Optum. Yep. 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 I've had yeah, one of their was, cards in my wallet, Marius. I, I promise you, I know what the logo looks like. I was working, I was working uh, as facility manager for, for uh, they've been hiring GLL, like facility management company down there. Uh, but I wasn't very interested on that point about the, the IT and stuff. And I'm I, now I'm quite interested to move from facility management to the software developer things. And I started by myself, HTML, CSS, now Bootstrap, and after that, I'm going to do JavaScript. But what you said, because this was my next question, you said you're going to start with everybody from the scratch. It's like for, for you, for your boot camp, do you need these, these three things, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, yeah? Uh, those are going to be covered because of the need in the application development process. Anything that you do carry within that from your previous experience is only going to add to and give you more time to look at other things and to continue to advance yourself. Uh, that's great experience that you've done, but in my experience, a caring individual that actually gives a you know what about your outcome is going to transfer that knowledge in a way that's going to mean something to your life. And I'd rather count on that person that I felt that emotion from than trying to do it on my own because it's going to happen quicker. They know the shortcuts. They know what is going to be a barrier. They know where you're going to get stopped up. You know, the, the, your um, Udemy's, your uh, quick online, easy learning, super cheap, do it on your own. It, it's great. I'm not going to lie. It can help people. And even our instructors use a lot of those courses as they continue to pick things up and stay in the now. But at the end of the day, if you want to go get a job in the next, I don't know, you take full-time 13 weeks, next 13 weeks or 25 weeks, and you want to hit the ground running, I'd really like to have somebody that cared about my outcome and that was fully invested in who I was going to be as a developer and as a person beyond just the coding, beyond the coding, the insight they give me, the roles they've been in. They can save me so much time. As I mentioned the words, the term ROI, it's there and it's real. And Marius, you can choose once you're done with the boot camp what jobs, employers, locations, setups, work-life balance that you want to, because everybody is in so, there's so much demand. You saw by the numbers, just in our tri-state, 13,000 jobs. It's, it's in so much demand. It's, it's a beautiful process. And as Sean mentioned, the goosebumps and getting to see what happens in people's lives I think Kevin and I, as, as success specialists, we oftentimes forget about just the coding because we don't see the coding. Um, we see the people and we see the way they change their life. And that's, that's everything to us. That's why we, we like to get to know you. I have one quick question. Go ahead, please. Um, do we need special com computer to do your program? Um, your computer, we, we actually provide a leased computer during the time of your boot camp. We are looking at your ability to purchase or maintain that computer. If you don't think you have the computer to handle the needs of the program, you will be given one as a as a leased resource to be turned back in. One of the things we've also recognized is depending on your source control, which is why Git and GitHub are very important. Um, when you store your files, you need to look at where you store them. If you hand a computer back in that has a bunch of your code on it and you don't have availability to that, all of a sudden that becomes a challenge. So if you don't have the equipment, talk to us. Again, don't let a barrier stand in your way. Not financing, not a computer. You're talking about your, your financial future. You're talking about your income. You're talking about loving to do something. And I am a, I will tell you, 
I'm an advocate for doing what you love to do. You can ask Kevin. Kevin knows me pretty well. I, I want you to do something that you love to do. I love what I do. I don't ever feel like I work. If I can be an advocate and fight for everybody else to feel that same way, I'm in. That's why I love the boot camp. So don't don't talk to us about the barrier. We'll we'll fight with you and figure it out. Don't don't stop today. It's not about a computer. We'll we'll get that taken care of. We'll figure it out with you. Takesha, go ahead, please. Are there? I know the part time um, job of coding. Is there a certain Saturday? Like, do you give out the dates ahead of time for people who may work full time and may possibly work on Saturdays? I work at a credit union, so I work a lot of Saturdays. You probably, in order to complete the part time, you're probably going to have to look at a schedule switch for that Saturday of some kind. We 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 cannot do Tuesday, a Monday night, Wednesday night for three to three and a half hours and then not have that Saturday and get it done within six months. It's not possible. So we would need at the least, if you can't do Monday through Friday, you want to keep your job. See if you can move that Saturday. We need the Saturday because we can't ask our instructor to do the Sunday thing. We are a very family oriented business and family comes first at max. And I hear that from Denise all the time. Um, that includes my family. So you'd have to, you'd have to look at a schedule change. You'd have to have the Saturday. And I mean, when you think about it, it's only a Saturday, four Saturdays a month for six months. You're talking about a $14,000 investment for what averages out to be north of $56,000 per year based on our average graduate salaries. There's the ROI. I'm a business, like I'm a businessman. I'm not going to lie. I, I own my own company. Max is one of my clients and I've been working with them for three years. And Kevin and I work on the boot camp. He's internal. I'm external, but I will tell you, you get this training. You don't get one basket with a bunch of eggs in it. You get multiple baskets with eggs in each basket. You're going to have choices and options. And when I learned software, I know 3D modeling, Adobe, I know web, I know from there, sky's the limit. Nobody's going to tell me what I can and cannot do. We're going to give you the tools and the skills that you need to make your choices, whether I want to work from home, don't work from home. There's so much need out there and the companies are having to really pony up on the work-life balance and what the work culture is like because they need you badly. They need you. Um, Procter and Gamble here in Cincinnati is headquartered. They sell toilet paper, shampoo, and soap. They are one of the biggest IT companies in the world. Period. There, there's almost more IT than sales now. There's almost more IT than anything else. Um, TQL, who was here with us. They have plans. They're a logistics company in shipping. They have plans to hire 500 developers in the next three years. There is no shortage of opportunity and choices. You just got to get yourself to the finish line. That's real. So do I, excuse me, I'm sorry. So do I call you or do I call, um, I wrote it down. Kevin? Yeah, who do Kevin? I call? Kevin's with us. Start, start, start with Kevin. Kevin and I okay. tag team. We, we, we tag team and we're both available. We are both available anytime that you need for any questions that you have. Start with Kevin because he'll, he'll help you get scheduled for your assessment and make sure that you get in and, and start to take those steps. Um, I focus a little more on marketing and then I fill in where as needed because we get, we get, as we approach boot camps, like we've got one coming up. Uh, I won't go data analytics in July, but I'll talk about the part-time at the end of the summer. When we get into July, the end of July, and the part-time starts in August, we start getting flooded. We, we only accept per boot camp 16 students. And that's because we really protect your one-on-one -on -one instructor time. We are not 
a turnstile of developers. We're not a, a developer mill just throwing people out there for the sake that the opportunity is there. We want to make the right people because we have to live up to our name when it comes to our hiring partners. They have an expectation for what a max grad means, and we're not going to fall short of that. Yeah, so Dakisha, um, I, I left my contact information in the chat. Yes. Reach out, let me know do. your availability, and we'll okay. We'll connect and we'll, we'll talk. Thank and you. If, if you want to reach pleasure. out to me, talk about what my experience has been, what my technical training has done. As I said, I'm not a software developer, but the amount of technical training that I got is extensive, and it has meant the biggest difference in my life, period. Are you in are you in sales? You said you have your own company. Do you sell sell? Are you I run I, ru I run a marketing and branding business, and we focus on just full service solutions. And when I met Max, I actually dedicated twenty in the first year of my business. I dedicated twenty hours a week to Max and the boot camp because I believed in it so much. I loved it because the I went through co op during college. I got two and a half years of on the job before I left. And when I left, it was a struggle. Two and a half years on the job out of a four-year degree, I'm sorry, five-year degree. I graduated from uh, the University of Cincinnati in the DAP program in urban planning. When I left, I had two and a half years on the job and they said, that's not journey level experience. And so even with that, I was at the bottom of the ladder. But the software they gave me the technical training they gave me, the amount of things I know how to do at this point in time, all the difference in the world. So I believe in it. I believe in what you're pursuing. I believe in this type of training and I know what it can do. So Kevin and I are just here to help. Plain and simple. Whether it's, you know what, you may even decide maybe it's not the max boot camp for me. We just wanted to educate you on boot camps today. If you choose us, makes our heartbeat, but we just want to help you as a person, first of all, whatever that, and maybe that means it's not us. That's okay. It's all right. But hopefully today we've given you the information that you need, the connections you need and some motivation and inspiration. And John, Marius, Elise in New York, uh, James, Jack, Myra, uh, Dakisha, I appreciate your time today and spending it with us. And hopefully we get to connect again. Uh, hopefully we get to see you in a boot camp. But um, thank you for your interest. We are past our time and I love to steal as much time as possible because Denise tells me to keep it short. Um, but thank you all of you for joining us. I appreciate your time. Reach out to Kevin or myself if you want to talk. Just let us know we're here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys very Thank much. Thank you for your time, everybody. Bye. Appreciate have a, it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Take Take care. Care. Bye.